And we're live. Hello, everyone. I'm Luke. Um, here in episode two of my voiceover series where I interview different voice actors. Here with, um, sorry, uh, Darby. Uh, and I'm sorry, get a lot of names wrong. Is it Darby Worley? That's right. Yep, Darby Worley. Some of your fans might know me as Darby Lo uh, Logan because I was using a stage name at the time that we recorded um, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, but my real name is Darby Worley, and I'm not using that name anymore. It's kind of a long story, but I had an internet stalker, and I <laughs> and I didn't want him to be able to like chase me around on the different voice sites and stuff, and so I was using a uh, an alias. So that's a it's a short version of a long story, but that's yeah, why course. I was using Darby Logan at that time. I have since had it fixed on IMDb, but I think it still uh, says Darby Logan in the credits of the game. Right. So my first question for you is. It's it's kind of an well I don't know about an easy one but like um how did you get into the industry like what was your inspiration Yeah so I um I was a music th uh, musical theater kid I grew up acting and singing and dancing and um and kept doing the music music mostly musicals but um some kind um, some regular uh, plays as well and um I was singing in bands and doing a lot of things with my voice and uh, because people tell you that if you can do anything except become an actor you should um I I quit acting when I was in my early 20s and I didn't act again until I I was about 30 I, I took about 10 years off out of the business and um I I went to see them I remember seeing the movie Fight Club and there's this scene in Fight Club where Brad Pitt um uh, accosts this bodega manager i think his name is raymond and he's and he's like you know i think have you seen fight club uh you know, like i've, I've seen a little bit is, is that the one with ice cube no it's not with ice cube it's um it's an it's an old movie with brad pitt and edward norton um but anyway the gist of it the brad pitt character is kind of like this um this id like creature who um is anti-capitalist and um and and then very into like people living their lives and and they and he he starts this fight club where guys actually get together and fight um to actually feel you know, like feel something in this uh this numbing world that we have so anyway um there's this scene in fight club where he accosts this bodega manager and he find he takes out his wallet and he sees that he has has a, a student id and he's like why did you quit going to school raymond what did you want to be what did you want to be and he's like oh, i wanted to be a veterinarian and he's like i'm gonna come back here well he's and, and brad pitt's like why did you quit why aren't you a veterinarian he's like oh it's just so much school it's so hard and brad pitt like pistol whips him and says i'm gonna come back here in one year and if you are not well on your way to becoming a veterinarian i'm gonna kill you <laughs> and i and that scene just like hit me so hard and i was like huh if if brad pitt was gonna show up here in one year and kill me if i wasn't doing the job that i loved what would like what were like what would i do and i was like i think i'd get back into performing and so i started auditioning um this is i was living in austin texas at the time and i started auditioning for bands i booked a couple of jobs i um i booked a commercial i got a movie i started doing some work down there and i and i quickly realized that if i was going to make it a full-time job that i was going to have to move to either new york or la and i really don't like la so i uh, chose New York City and came out to the city and started doing more theater, um, uh, commercials, um, you know, some film and TV. I was on a soap for a while. And as I got older, I just realized that, that the voiceover was the stuff that I really, really enjoyed. One, you don't have to wear makeup. Um, two, you're not <laughs> limited by your physical form. I can be, you know, I can be a withered chica or I can be a doctor or I can be a teenager or I can be an old lady. So you're not, you're not limited by your, your type as much um, with voice work and you can do it from home. And I, and I started working from home. I did the, the withered chica job from my uh, apartment in New York city. So yeah, that's kind of how I, I, how my career has evolved. That is a very nice and funny story. <laughs> uh my next one is uh for one um it's for any like new voice actors out there what kind of microphones do you recommend for them uh i am not really a technical person um i i think that you know you can get started with a good usb mic like a Sh i think sure makes a really good one um maybe i'm not sure if sennheiser has one or not um if you want to make broadcast quality stuff from your home like what i'm recording on right now what you're hearing what you're hearing me on is a sennheiser 416 it's not the most um it's not the most expensive mic but it's not the cheapest mic either it's somewhere i think i paid around 
a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars for it but you can get a decent usb mic um for podcasting and doing like um you know explainer videos and stuff that's not going to go on tv for maybe 150 bucks right those personally i use a shore so that's actually a really good recommendation yeah um my next one because wither chica is such an awesome character um uh. Oh, one thing before I, before we move on from the technical stuff, you will also need some kind of um a preamp. Um, I happen to use the Baby Face Pro, but do you you um and I don't recommend necessarily um a U a USB preamp because they could they kind of make the the sound a little bit um you know that that like you're in a well kind of sound. So, so you you need more than just a mic. You need a mic and a preamp. Um, if you're gonna use um oh gosh, what do you call I. See, I told you I'm not technical. It's if you're using a mic that uses phantom power, then you will need a preamp. If you're using a USB mic, it's fine. So, sorry, that's you might you might find, but you'll probably find <laughs> um, <laughs> much more knowledgeable engineering people than me. I have a guy that I that I um I'm an actor. I am not an engineer. So um anyway, that's that, that's as much as I know. It's not it's not great technical information, but there's lots of great te technical information out there, and I can send you some links um when we get done. So anyway, moving on, Withered Chica. Oh yeah, of course. You know, I'm not technical either. I, I made my first demo like like I didn't even have a mic at all. I, I recorded it yeah. on my like, you know, my like camera mm. thing on my phone, the video. Yeah. I just went in my closet and just clicked it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, with a Chica, um, first off, um, this one's from Matthew. It's a question from Matthew. OK, uh, do you uh, how do you? Oh, sorry. Um, did you audition for anyone else besides Wither Chica or even get close? That is a very good question. And I actually did not audition for Withered Chica. I auditioned for Night Marion. And um, I got a note from Scott, you know, a day, a day or two later saying, hey, I'm actually casting you as Withered Chica. And um, since I don't know any, <laughs> you guys are always very disappointed to hear this, but I don't know anything about the game. <laughs> <laughs> so he was really excited that he was giving me this role of withered chicken. I thought, oh, this must be important. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's how that's how I got the part. That's very interesting. Um, did you uh, did you at all search up about or even play the game after you found out how popular it was? I haven't. I probably should. I really didn't find out how popular it was until a, a few months ago. Somebody found somebody found me. Somebody figured out that I my name wasn't Darby Logan. I think that people had been looking for Darby Logan for a long time, but somebody somehow figured out that we were the same person. And I can't remember who it was, the first person that contacted me. But yeah, this this maybe like, like a year ago that I discovered. I was like, oh my gosh, this game is huge, <laughs> which was pretty cool. That's very nice. Um, I'm not really. I don't really play play video games. Like I play, you know, silly games on my phone, like Candy Crush. You know, I'm an old lady. I don't know if you realize that. I'm like I'm like 55 years old. So I don't. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not hip to what you kids are all up to. You know, I'm not either. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of old school myself. Um, what's your favorite line if you have one? Ooh, my favorite line is definitely the one about breaking your face. <laughs> <laughs> I can break your face. I love that line. <laughs> um, I had a list. Oh, there it is. Uh, do you have any recommendations on making a good demo? Yes, I do. Um, a good demo is one minute or less in length. Um, it should have. Um, some variety, but not too much. You know, you want to you want you want to kind of figure out what your what you can bring to the industry that's not already there. Um, every piece on your demo should be as if you're talking to one person. So think about the audience. Who who are you talking to? Um, and you should close with something that has some pizzazz. Like my demo ends with some fast legal. So close with something that is like is like a ta -ta, like a you know um, like a button. Right. Yeah, and, you, and your demo should probably start with your your bread and buddy butter kind of voice, you know, just like the, the thing that you do the best. Right. And That's of some very you have, good advice. Yeah, and of course you need demos for diff, all the, your different things. Like I have um a medical demo, a commercial demo, an e-learning demo, an on-hold demo. 
um, maybe a YouTube video, maybe like an explainer video demo. I've got a whole bunch of them. You, if you go to my website, um, darbyworley.com, you can see all the different demos that I have. And then I also have um, uh, some just like individual spots. If you, you know, um, for example, like if, if somebody wants to hear my fast legal, that's something that I do. Um, that's something that I do well. It's like really fast talking. Um, so if you have anything that you want to highlight, you can pull out some specific spots and include them there. And if you do video games, you need a video video game demo. Right. Animation, whatever, you know, whatever, or movie trailers, um, whatever your things are, what all the things that you do, audiobooks, you need a demo for each of those things. Right. And um th this is a this is a new one, but uh okay. have you ever talked or met any of the cast from Five Nights at Freddy's? I have communicated with some of them and I'm not going to remember anyone's name at this point, but um, over like Twitter. Um, but I've, I've never met anybody. No, we, we all recorded our stuff separately. Um, I've never met Scott. I've, I've never actually even spoken to him on the phone. I don't think everything that we did was over email. Right. And he's and retired now, isn't know, he? And I know you don't know much about five nights at Freddy's, but like, yeah, if you were, I don't know if you know any other characters, but uh, if you did want to voice someone else, who would it be? Mm. Hmm. Wow. I. Ooh, that's a good one. Um. I mean, I wouldn't mind taking a crack at Night Marion since that's who I I auditioned for. Um. Or maybe one of the other Withers, like Bonnie. But again, I'm I I'm, I can't speak. To um intelligently about the <laughs> about the game right. i'm i'm sorry to disappoint you i'm sure that's just, that's just like shattering no <laughs> it's not disappointing um besides um besides five nights at freddy's um what else um would they know you from well if you've spent any time in america at all you have definitely heard me trying to sell you something <laughs> either on tv or on the radio um I have a, a big campaign running right now in the States for a company called CDW. So if you hear any CDW ads right now, anything on TV, internet, um, radio, that's all me. Um, let's see. I have, in terms of like my film and TV stuff, I, I used to be on All My Children. If you go to my IMDb page, you can see a bunch of credits for. Right. Um, I, I actually various. have your IMDb page. I haven't seen many of these things, but like I've seen you were in a, project called breadcrumbs called yeah, breadcrumbs is a horror movie a really low budget horror movie um i get i get killed in a very um uh disgusting way <laughs> <laughs> now if you thought a project you did was super underrated and you thought you'd get a little more like attention or love which mm. one would it be that is a really easy question for me to answer. It's Wake Up World. Wake Up World was a project that we did, that I did with Liz Winstead. If you, I don't know if you know who she is, but she um, co-created The Daily Show. And um, we it was a satire of a morning news program, like a Fox News kind of, um, or NBC kind of thing. And I played the news reader. So my, I, it was just like I'm one of those bimbo, you know, um, you know, blonde, uh, short skirt, big boobs, um, reading the news to you. Uh, I like I'm Emily Ratchett here with your morning update, blah, 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 like that, that, that kind of um, thing. And it was really good. It was really funny. And we um, we did a pilot and we came so close to getting picked up for a, a couple of different areas like Crackle was interested in us, um, Comedy Central, and it just didn't go. And I have always I've, I've always regretted that. That was a that was a. That was that, that's my favorite project. Another one that I was I'm really proud of was something I did for The Onion. Uh, again, a newscaster from the future. And um, it, it was really sharp satire, very funny. And it, and it I did get covered like I was featured in the, in the New York Times, um, but it didn't. It was their first um, experiment with paid content. You had to pay for it. And it's just people are just are so used to getting comedy for free on the Internet that they're very hesitant to pay for it, you know. Right. So I actually have three more questions for you. Okay. The next one is, do you have a favorite voice actor or actress? Hmm. 
I think my favorite voice actor is, I don't know, she's, she's, okay, I have two. Um, I'll, I'll be, I'll, the first one is, is, pri- is only a voice actor. He's a, he's a famous promo guy. He lives out in LA. His name is Joe Cipriani and he's just the nicest guy ever. And he's got a fantastic voice. You've heard him, you know, from every, on um, everything from The Simpsons to all movie trailers. Like he's just, he's hugely successful and just the nicest guy you could ever meet. And then my second person, is more than a voice actor. She's a famous um, actress all around and comedian, and that's Sarah Silverman. And the reason I choose Sarah is because she is just, she's some someone that I actually know, and um, she's just like the nicest, you know? <laughs> she's, she she does this great podcast now where people just call in and talk to her about it. Like, it's almost like she's giving out therapy and advice. Um, and she does that all in, like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure she makes money from it, but it's, you know, she, does, she doesn't have to do that kind of stuff. She's got millions of dollars. Um, she's been very, um, always very curious about bridging the political divide in America. And so she's done, um, she, she did a show for, Ooh, was it Hulu? Maybe Hulu. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but she actually went out and, and spoke to people who had very different beliefs than she did and tried to, you know, kind of like bridge that divide. And I think that is so important. And I, I admire her so much for trying, you know, for trying that. Um, it didn't really work, but you know, I, um, I admire her for getting into it um, with folks that she doesn't necessarily agree with. Right, right. Those are actually... I've heard of um. I'm sorry, I always forget his name. What's that other one you brought up? Uh, Joe Cipriano. So yeah, I, Joe Cipriano, Cipriano. He's Cipriano. a great yeah. voice actor. Yeah, and he's an even better guy. He's wonderful. If you look up one of my, uh, so I used to host a podcast called Everything Acting, and I interviewed him. Um, I don't remember what number episode it is, but if you Google his name and Everything Acting podcast, you'll probably find the the episode out there somewhere in the ether. And it's it's old um, by now, but it's a, a um, so the information is kind of dated. But you'll get an idea of like how nice he is. Right. And uh, if you were to voice act in any anime, cartoon, video game, uh, news report channel, anything, what would it be? Hmm. I, this is maybe going to sound silly, but I've always dreamed of being the voice of one of the women's networks like own or the Oprah channel. Like I really enjoy doing promos and I haven't done as many as I would like. Um, so yeah, I think that would be like my dream job. It's regular, it's steady income. Um, you work almost every day and I just really enjoy, um, doing promos. So I'd like to do more of those. Uh, my next one, and actually I have an extra one. There's one I forgot. Do okay. you do the effects for Weather, Wither Chica? I do. That's and I will never nice. tell what they are. <laughs> that's, that's my secret. I will take it to my grave. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. Yeah. My My next one is, besides the effects, how do you do the voice of Wither Chica? Like, what's the process? Oh gosh. So I, um, Scott sent me photos of her, um, images and he, he sent me like a breakdown. I don't, I, this is so long ago by now. I don't remember exactly what he told me about her, but I knew that her voice box had been destroyed and that she didn't have, um, full use of her voice. So that's where the effects come in. And in terms of um, the character, like, I just thought she seemed so angry, you know, like she was just, um, like, like she was frustrated with her situation and she wanted to take people down with her. And so that was the mindset that I tried to get into. Whenever I play a character, I always try to think the character's thoughts. I try to put myself in their situation and actually think their thoughts before I start speaking. That moment before for acting is really critical. Like, what were you doing right before you started speaking? Um, so I was just thinking about being like shut in those walls and, um, and having my, my face all busted up and, um, yeah, that's, just, that's kind of the stuff that I thought about. That is very nice because Wither Cheek is one of my favorites personally. When why I... is that? Tell me that. Why is, why is it that she's, cause I hear that a lot and I wonder what I'm curious Well, why. in I won't, I won't get deep into the story because that would take like the next three hours. Okay. Um, <laughs> But uh, in in Five Nights at Freddy's, it's been going on like ever since 2015. Yeah, and like like it's like your character 
is like one of the first characters to ever appear. Now, there hasn't been an people have been like, at least before the voices arrived, people were like begging to hear what they would sound like if Mm -hmm. they had voices. And the only one who had a voice was Scott and he played the phone guy who gives you the message. And but then like, you know, they didn't give at first they didn't give a list of who's getting a voice or not. They're like, if you play the game, you'll hear who gets a voice and who doesn't. Oh, and then smart. suddenly, iconic character Chica gets her voice. And we oh, were like, okay. oh, my gosh, this is epic. Who does it? Yeah. And then, like, I don't know if you know, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but there's like a behind the voice actors page. Mm. And then it has like you on it. And we're like, oh, man. We know who the voice of <laughs> with her, with Chica is. It's like an iconic character yeah. that, like, everyone, like, she is scary. Yeah. Oh, I love it. And so everyone's just like, oh, man. And it, everyone was even more terrified because, you know, voice acting could be a really fun job. But, like, some people, like, so, like I don't know if you've heard of Bonnie. He's another character. Um, there's a not the act. There's a character named Toy Bonnie, and there's like people were like, "Eh, his voice is okay. It's not exactly what I pictured." But when they heard yeah. Chica's voice, they were like, "Oh man, they did it!" You know. <laughs> oh, that com- makes me feel good. I love it. <laughs> like I go on YouTube, and it has like two hundred and like sixty eight k views, and, <laughs> and I'm just like. Oh man. That's awesome. That's what it, that's what it was. Somebody found me on YouTube. That's now I'm it's all coming back to me, Luke. That's what that's how I first discovered the fandom. Somebody on YouTube tagged me in a video or something and and then that's how I started meeting people in the fandom. And that was probably 2 years ago. Right. And uh when and when you heard you voiced uh Wither Chica, did you um did like I don't know if you've heard like not even just seen it but just like heard of Five Nights at Freddy's did you like get excited or you're like oh it's another you know, I literally just... had never heard of the game I had I had no knowledge of it whatsoever I had no idea what a big hit it was um until folks started contacting me and then of course once I found that out I spent like I, I probably went into a like a FNAF like deep dive k-hole for a day looking at all the YouTube videos <laughs> Um, and it's just, it was just so, it's such a thrill for me to find out how responsive people have been to the game. That's just awesome. Right. And because Scott fact, was very, lo- Scott was like super low key about it. You know, he was just, he didn't, he is, he was very humble. He didn't ever say how successful the franchise was. I had no idea. He He's low key about everything. Like we weren't expecting yeah. like voices at first, you know, mm-hmm. we thought it was something like Scott wasn't going to do. <laughs> But then it, it happened and then like it just it it blew up. Wow. But it was very nice to have you on the show. Um is I am there, very happy to do it. Is there anything you want to tell your Five Nights at Freddy's fans or even just fans of other stuff that you've been in? Oh, I'm just I'm just so appreciative. Every time I receive a note or a request for an autograph or any of that stuff, I'm just I'm always really honored and happy to do it. Um, I am looking into maybe putting up um, a page on Cameo so people could um, could purchase uh, greetings for their friends in the Withered Chica voice. I don't I don't know if that's going to happen yet. If if that does, I'll put it up on my website and I'll put it out, I'll tweet it out and put it on my Instagram and all that all that good stuff. But mostly I just want to say thank you. Obviously, we, you know, none of us have a career without any people who want to listen to us talk. Yeah, of course. And, you know, Comic-Con, I think, I think that they would totally have you at one of those. I would love to do a Comic Con. I, I so I'm I'm kind of a like I'm not a video game nerd, but I'm a total Game of Thrones nerd, and I would love to go to a Comic Con. That would be um that would be fantastic. That would be great, and I I would get your autograph. It would be like <laughs> amazing. Are do other FNAF characters go to um the cons? Oh yeah, totally. There's this like 
Like I know you haven't really played the game, but there's a man named uh, named uh, Kellen Goff. He was also in an anime called My Hero Academia, uh huh, and uh, he goes to cons all the time because he plays like five characters. Oh, cool. And like you know, not a lot of the voice actors know each other. Like there was a panel they went to, and it was like their first time meeting. But Oh, wow. like the own like. Like Kellen actually got into the new uh this the new Minions movie Oh, wow. in theaters, and the only reason like he's gotten this far was just because of Five Nights at Freddy's. That's amazing. That's amazing. So No, like, I should probably tell my agent that I've done this. I don't think I, my agent even knows that, <laughs> that I did this job. so I'm just saying like you go to a con and it could <laughs> lead you to like voicing like Minnie or something. <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> well, Luke, thanks so much for having me on. It's really, it's really a pleasure to meet you. And, and I look forward to hearing the interview. Of course. Uh, make Thank sure you you so tell much. folks where they can follow me, put all my socials in there. I'm I'm on all the things. Except, I'm not on Discord, but I'm on like um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Of course. And I think it's uh, at Darby W. Yep, that's on Twitter. And then uh, same uh, on Instagram at Darby W. Um, Twitter, I use mostly as an incoming feed. I don't tweet a lot, but I do um, talk about my voiceover career a lot on Instagram. Right. Yeah, and I actually would follow you, but my Instagram was hacked. Oh, no, that's happened to so many people I know. <laughs> Instagram needs to get their security together. it was out of nowhere. But Yeah. hey, some people that are going to watch have Instagram. So when you get the chance and you're not hacked, follow her. <laughs> well, thank And you I so will much I will for also joining publicize us. this uh, when it's out. Thanks, Luke. Have a um, uh, good night <laughs> and I will have a good day and we'll uh, we'll talk soon. You too. Thank you guys for watching and have a good one. Cheers.